the question that we'll be going through today is we'd like to write a pair of functions to serialize and deserialize a list of strings. Hey everyone, uh, I'm really excited to be here today doing a software engineering mock interview with Daniel Griffin. Um, Daniel, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Daniel. Uh, I used to work in the search ads world on small businesses, moved over to uh, kind of more general small businesses, and uh, from there went over to Waymo to work on some of the self-driving car simulation side. Um, but lately I've been finding myself at Main Street uh, heading engineering to make sure that small businesses get the government incentives that they deserve. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to have you. Um, we'll be doing a uh, mock coding interview. Um, and the question that we'll be going through today is we'd like to write a pair of functions to serialize and deserialize a list of strings. Uh, so a use case of this could be, um, let's imagine we have a client and a server and we want to send uh, an array of strings from one to the other, um, but we're not able to use a standard library or encoding like JSON or protocol. Gotcha. Uh, is there any restrictions around these strings? Um, right? Is there, is there a set uh, character set that for these strings or can, they, can any character be in that? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Let's assume that um, it could be like any kind of string, any kind of character, it could be words, or it could be something else. And uh, in terms of length, let's assume that um, it could be pretty long. So like 64,000 characters, let's say. Gotcha. Cool. Um, well, so that knocks out the, the simplest solution I could think of, which is you just join on semicolons or some special character and, you, and then you split. Um, because, you know, what if one of those subwords or strings has that character? Um, so let's avoid that solution. Um, and that also means we can avoid, you know, we don't have to do any um, escaping. So the other way I can imagine doing it is you want to encode the length of the string and the string for each of the strings in this, um, in this list, and then you can go back the other way. Um, the cheapest way I could think of doing it is say you have the word cat, um, or you know, let's go through this example. If I have cat and jump, something like that is you could just encode uh, cat and then four jump, something like that. All right, because then you have three, then you know that this is uh, you know, the end of your number, and then you have cat and then four, and then you have jump. You could go through that. The nice thing about that is it's really uh, human readable, so it's easy to debug or see what's happening on the wire. Um, the downside is, as you said, they could be uh, up to, you said 60, 64,000. Um, long, I'm not going to type out a 64,000 long character string, but you can imagine that and then that's not particularly um, space efficient for a number. A number shouldn't have to take that many characters. The other way I can imagine it is um, you could do, I'm going to just use x in, in place of my character, uh, but you could do x and then cat and then x and then jump, where uh, x is the number encoded as uh, a 16 byte character uh, that represents the number. So I think I'll probably lean that way because then it's always, you know, it's as space efficient as possible. And I'm comfortable that we'll be able to write stuff that we can, we can debug along the way. Uh, and we'll see if that happens. Um, cool. If there's not any other points, I can jump right in. Or do you have any other questions around, around my encoding scheme? I think that makes sense to me. I think we can, we can jump into it. Awesome. Well, then I'll leave my serialized to serialize functions for the moment. I'm going to do uh, f encode number. So let's say we have some number m. What we want to do is car. Python makes that nice and easy. Uh, we can do something quick, which is um, Python is raise uh, number is to large to code. Let's make sure that we catch it if we are trying to encode a number that's too large. Um, so that we don't accidentally have errors and we, we know that they happen. Um, we can write the, the other side of this, which is decode number, we take a string, um, and then we can return S. And then the nice thing we can do to check this um, is 10, 100, and then zero X. Hmm, let's try that. Um, 
Um, do, do. I'm just so sorry to talk through what I'm doing. Uh, what I want to do is I want to just take a, a smattering of numbers and make sure that if I take a number, encode it, and then decode it, it's the same number. Uh, so running through kind of three arbitrary numbers and making sure that they match. Um, so what I can do to do that is uh, I think if I save, whoop, true, true, true. Awesome. Oh, I print hello world a lot as well. I can get rid of that. Um, but so 10, 100, and 4,095, they all match if I Take, take the number, encode it, decode it, they all match. So I'm gonna take that as my, my very lightweight interview version of a unit test uh, and say that this is gonna work for us. So let's jump into the serialize function. Um, the nice thing about this methodology is serialize is gonna be nice and, and easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our return array. Our end goal here, we actually need an argument, which is our list of strings. Um, we're gonna return uh, one string. The reason I'm starting with an array is in Python, uh, whenever you try and update an array, uh, you want to kind of construct your strings at one time because anytime you update a string, it's going to be O of n. So we don't want to keep concatenating to this string. So we are going to push these things onto an array and we're going to join and return at the end to try and be as efficient as possible. Um, that's because these are, you know, serializing and deserializing are things that you do often. We want to make sure that they're efficient and that they're not eating up too much time. Um, so we're going to say for word in L, we can do uh, ritz.append number length of word and then dot one parenthesis. And then we have to just do so that is our easy return uh, our serialized function, right? So all you do. It's for every word. First, you're putting in the encoded length of the word, and then you're putting in the word itself. So again, that's where you're gonna get this, you know, three cat, four jump, 6,400, whatever string that happens to be. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're putting a, a paragraph of a book as a sentence, who knows? Um, so that makes the deserialize a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna take in some string. And again, we can have, this time we actually want to return an array. So we have our return array here. And then what we can do is we want to start at the first part of the string. So zero. Um, we can say if the length of the string is less than two, we can just return, return early. Um, the reason for that is if you, you know, it takes one character to encode the length. You're not going to encode a length of zero. So if it's less than two, that means that there's no, there's nothing encoded, there's nothing stored. So we can just early return on and we don't have to do any iteration. It's nice and easy. Uh, but that is not the end of it. So then what we want to do is go over the course of the whole string. Uh, and we're going to do this piece by piece. So the first is we can get the, you know, I'm calling for brevity or each of the strings that we have in this array, I'm calling a word. That's kind of the taxonomy I'm trying to use. Um, so we can do word length is the decode number of uh, S I. So just the character that you're currently at is, is that encoding of the length. Um, we can also say if word length plus I is greater than or equal to the length of the string. Presumably, you know, if you have a number, if your encoding says there's three characters and there's only two left, something's gone awry. Um, you know, maybe if this was used in a production system, you'd have some sort of, of way of reconciling that. But for this quick implementation, let's just throw an error and, and move on. And, and you can you could debug that later. Um, so then the, the nice thing is the word is nice and simple. It's just from i plus one, because uh, uh, we can actually simplify this a hair. 
i plus equals one. So we want to skip that number encoding. And then the word is in the string from i to i plus. And so it's just that subset of the string that you've encoded. We can then push that onto the, the return array, right? So we want to make sure we capture that. And then we just increment i by the, the word length so that you're at the end of that next word. Either you you should be right at the end of the array or you should have um, you know the next number right there. So you should be in that spot. And then all you have to do is return the return. So in theory, that should work. That is always the question. So let's see what happens if we do, oh, I can just, I serialize and then deserialize. Cat dog jumped. Got that. All right, a moment of truth. Cat dog jump. So we can successfully serialize and deserialize, and the uh, the strings match. And so if I was doing this and I was trying to build out a production system, I would, or I was going to just use this in any production system. I would go from here and I would write some tests to make sure, and I would have probably more examples. I'd have examples that were much closer or right at that um, character length limit that we've put in here. Um, and I would make sure that kind of more of the kind of edge cases were covered. So what happens if I pass in the empty array, um, passing it in some bad ser serializations to the deserialize to make sure that we do throw errors when we expect it and we don't return garbage, it should be, we should catch that. We shouldn't just walk past it. Um, but that is most of what I would do. And then for extensibility, if we wanted to, you know, say we wanted to start accepting longer words for some, some reason, we started finding larger and larger books that we're shoving in these arrays for some, some reason. Um, you could change up the encode and decode number to, to do some shifting around and support larger numbers. And then all you would have to do is update this decode number. Um, side of things to account for how many characters you want to be passing in. So that would be the only part of this, the serialize and deserialize that would have to change. Otherwise, the rest should just keep on working. Awesome. Great. I think this is uh, a good place to sort of uh, stop the interview. Um, I think we've come to like a really good solution and uh, you went through some like extensions and improvements we could be making. Um, yeah, before I give any uh, feedback, do you have any thoughts or reactions to sort of how that went or um, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, um, as is definitely common in interviews, there are parts of the time where you, you focus purely on implementing and it's hard to step aside and make sure that you're walking the interviewer through what's going on in your head. And so making sure to do that is really important. Um, but other than that, I think that the implementation itself, uh, I'm really happy with and making sure my you know, pseudo unit tests in this environment, make sure that we can cover it and, and be confident that it's working as expected. Yeah, awesome. I, I would agree with that. And I, I actually think you did a great job of that, of sort of stepping back at certain times and making sure you were explaining not only like your approach to the problem, but you were also doing little things like dropping in things about optimizing Python code that you knew about that were sort of informing the way you were writing your code. And I thought that was awesome. Um, you're obviously like a pro and you know, like really understood how to, you grok the problem really quickly and, and knew how to solve it. Um, do you have any uh, recommendations for people who maybe see a problem like this and, and don't immediately um, see a solution or maybe haven't done something like this before? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest thing in an interview is to recognize that things are a two way street. So kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of trying to push around what is the character set and what's the length and what are the requirements making sure to work with your interviewer this is not just a, a pure quiz um, one of the biggest signs that i've seen in, as a positive indicator when i've been interviewing people is that they pause to talk through the problem with me before just jumping in that they clarify aspects of it or if there are points of uncertainty around um, you know in this case is it better to have it be human readable or not um, pausing and just talking through your, it with your interviewer, uh, you know, what is the use case here? Why am I doing this is, is a great way to get unstuck. So poke at it with your interviewer. Totally. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, and uh, yeah, do you have any last words you'd like to add? 
Absolutely. Uh, so as I said earlier, I'm working on Main Street. We're really trying to make sure that small businesses can thrive and, and survive as much as possible. Uh, and we're also hiring engineers. So if you watch this and you feel like you want to get your toes wet in, in real world engineering and, uh, and interviewing, we would love to have you. Uh, you can check us out at workonmainstreet.com and you can email us at jobs at workonmainstreet.com uh, and we can set you up so you can, you can try this out uh, for, uh, for your actual work. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. And, and thanks everyone for joining. Um, please check out Exponent as well and good luck on your upcoming interview.